this is a recording of me reading to you guys the article from the BBC, Coronavirus Lockdown Protest, What's Behind the U.S. Demonstrations? Keep in mind, I've also posted this link within our playlist right here. So you could open this and follow along. Um, you can also refer back to this at any point. There's also a couple of videos embedded in the article that I think will also help your understanding. I can't play them in here because the sound won't pick up. So if you're interested in those, you're going to have to check them out on, the, on your own. But let's take a look. This is really uh, new breaking news. It says, across the country, groups of Americans are taking to the streets in protest of lockdown orders aimed at limiting the spread of COVID-19. Why? The U.S. now has over 761,000 cases and more than 40,000 deaths, with numbers still rising. Those signs have emerged that infection rates are slowing in some states. Some states are beginning to ease restrictions, reopening parks, beaches, and some small businesses in the coming days. But most of the U.S. remains under some form of a stay-at-home order. In dozens of states from coast to coast, protesters have taken to the streets, blocking roads and honking car horns. Why are they protesting? Those taking the streets say that the stringent measures, stringent means really strict, the stringent measures restricting movement and businesses are unnecessarily hurting citizens. Protesters say the stay-at-home measures imposed by state governments to control the spread of COVID-19 are an overreaction. Some have also come bearing firearms as gun rights groups have been among the organizers, citing an infringement on civil liberties. I want you to think about our unalienable rights, you know, our life, our liberty, our property, pursuit of happiness. Um, people are really feeling like these orders to stay at home, to wear masks out in public, um, that these are an infringement on some of these freedoms, right? Liberties is freedoms. Some also say that keeping these restrictions in place too long will cause long term damage to local economies. You guys know this already. You know, we're all stuck at home. Um, I, even for me in my life, you know, maybe I would go out to dinner maybe twice a week, um, you know, go to the movies, go shopping. I haven't really done any of that. So all these activities that I'm no longer doing, that you're no longer doing, that your family is no longer doing, that means that the money isn't going in the hands of these businesses. So the pro some of the protesters are saying that the overall impact that this is having on the economy is actually worse than all the people that will die if we don't. Um, put on any restrictions. So here's a photo of some of the protests. This is in Michigan. It says, as of last week, the total number of unemployment claims in the nation reached over 22 million, overturning decades of U.S. job growth. Many cite President Trump's caution that the cure cannot be worse than the disease itself. So President Trump has said, look, like we need to control the virus, but we can't go overboard and make our society suffer more than it has to. Right. He thinks that in some way the cure. Right. Or these measures might actually be worse than than actually getting COVID-19 itself. But not everyone wants to see all restrictions eased immediately. Some groups have also called for quarantining just the vulnerable, more testing to get people back to work or redefining essential businesses. Where are these protests happening? Demonstrations have occurred in over a dozen states, Michigan, Ohio, North Carolina, Minnesota, Utah, Virginia, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Oregon, Maryland, Idaho, Texas, Arizona, Colorado, Montana, Washington, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania. Something to know is these states are led by both Republican and Democratic governors. It would definitely raise a, you know, kind of raise a red flag if all these states had Republican governors or all had Democratic governors, but it's pretty evenly split. How many people are protesting? Well, protests have varied in size across the country, from a few dozen protesters in Virginia and Oregon to rallies of thousands in Michigan and Washington state. On Sunday, Washington state saw one of the largest demonstrations with some 2,500 protesters gathering at the Capitol in Olympia. The state was nearly, was the early epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak in the U.S. In Colorado, 
Hundreds of anti-lockdown protesters were met with a counter-protest by a few healthcare workers who, dressed in scrubs, that's like their outfit, blocked traffic at crossroads. Hundreds in Arizona took to their cars to create a gridlock around the Capitol building in Phoenix, Idaho, Maryland, Texas, and Indiana, so similar gatherings of hundreds. Who are the protesters? The organizers behind these protests have largely been conservative, pro-Trump, and pro-gun activists. U.S. media have described many of these demonstrations as reminiscent of Trump campaign events, with pro-Trump banners, t-shirts, and signs aplenty. Signs calling for freedom over tyranny have also been staples of these protests. Governors have been likened to kings or dictators. Give me liberty or give me death. A quote hearkening back to the American Revolution has also been a popular mantra. A mantra is like a saying. Not all of those attending are affiliated to organizations. Many are simply frustrated by the lockdown, strangling their ability to make a living. But far-right groups and militias have also made their presence known at some demonstrations. The rally outside the state capitol in Austin, Texas, was in part fueled by fans of conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, who was seen shaking hands with protesters. Amid chants of let us work were calls to fire Dr. Anthony Fauci, the U.S. infectious disease chief on the White House task force, the New York Times reported. As John Rowland, a military leader in Illinois, told the BBC, reopen my state or we will reopen it ourselves. So here's a, a tweet here. Jack, Jack Sweever and her seven-year-old daughter at the Austin rally. <clears throat> I'm not worried about catching the virus. If we did catch the virus, I feel we're healthy enough to fight it. So science, make Texas great again. Please open everything. It's like the daughter's holding an anti-vaccine ad. Bill Gates can keep his poison. I'm homeschooled. Well, what has the president said? President Donald Trump and his White House have expressed seemingly opposing views on the protests. Last week, Mr. Trump and his COVID-19 task force unveiled new guidance to begin reopening state economies. That guidance recommends three phases of slowly easing restrictions on businesses and social life, with each phase phasing, each phase lasting at least two weeks. The recommendations also include maintaining some social distancing, access to testing, and contact tracing. But a day after the administration's plan was announced, the president tweeted the slogans of liberate protests in several Democratic-run states. On Sunday, the president offered a conflicting message again, telling reporters some governors have gone too far, and later specifically calling out Michigan and Virginia. Some of these things that have happened are maybe not so appropriate, Mr. Trump said. In the end, it's not going to matter because we're starting to open up our states. And I think they're going to open up very well. One of the protesters, Mr. Trump said, their life was taken away from them, of the protesters. These people love our country. They want to get back to work. What's the reaction? While these protests may illustrate the concerns of some Americans, especially those in the rural parts of the country, they do not reflect the overall public opinion. A Pew Research Center survey last week found 66% of Americans are concerned that restrictions will be lifted too quickly, as opposed to 32% who are worried they will not be lifted soon enough. In addition, the survey found most of the country, regardless of party affiliation, believes the worst of the pandemic is yet to come. U.S. public health experts and many state leaders have continued to stress the importance of social distancing, justifying the measures protesters have taken issue with. On Monday, Facebook announced it would remove event listings for anti-lockdown protests in California, New Jersey, and Nebraska as they violated state government orders. State governors have also responded to the protesters and Mr. Trump's apparent support of them. Washington State's Jay Inslee, a Democrat, so the president was fomenting domestic rebellion. That means encouraging. So a lot of, uh, especially Democrats are saying, Mr. Trump, President Trump, you should not be encouraging these protests when we all know that even though it stinks, we have to do these, you know, take these precautions to save the country from the virus. Um, even Republican Governor Larry Hogan of Maryland also weighed in, telling CNN, I don't think it's helpful to encourage demonstrations and encourage people to go against the president's own policy. So that's the article. <clears throat> it's posted for you separate as well if you want to read it. Um, do your best answering the questions. Good luck.